Special Investigative Committee considering the impeachment of Attorney General Jason Roundsburg voted unanimously earlier today on a number of resolutions that will broaden the scope of their investigation. Austin Goss has been following this story and has an update for us tonight from the state capitol. After spending upward of 15 hours in executive session over the course of Tuesday and Wednesday, the Special Investigative Committee on Impeachment committed to making future meetings public. While the entire country, including South Dakota, has seen actually a slight uptick in the numbers compared to the past few years, DPS officials believe there are reasons for optimism heading in to the new year. Our Austin Goss sat down with Secretary Craig Price today. He has more on that. According to the Department of Public Safety, traffic accidents have been trending downward in the second half of 2021. They're hoping to build that success out into 2022. Governor Nome laid out a bevy of policy proposals today, and while many of them were very conservative in nature, she also wants to keep doing what is bringing people to the Rushmore state. Coverage begins tonight with Austin Goss. Governor Christy Nome talked a lot about fiscal conservatism and how it was a driving factor when she drafted her budget. Now, no one will have to balance that fiscal conservatism with a plan to spend millions of federal dollars in COVID relief funds. After three long days, South Dakota has a new map for the next 10 years. However, the deal that was made looked ready to fall through at any given moment. Now it only needs the governor's signature to become law. Austin Goss has been following that story for us and joins us now live from the state capitol. Good evening, Austin. Good evening, Kelsey and Brian. That's right, the South Dakota State Senate passed that bill 20 to 15 after it was brought back by way of a procedural maneuver known as a smoke out. Now the bill heads to Governor Christy Nome's desk, who has already signaled her intent to sign it. State House reporter Austin Goss with our six o'clock top story tonight. Austin, good evening. Good evening, Brian and Andrea. Sherry Brent told lawmakers today that Peter's path to certification was not normal. She also told them that she was forced out of her job last December, just five months after that fateful meeting at the governor's mansion. From cities the size of Sioux Falls to Spearfish, the crunch is on. It, it doesn't matter if you go to our smallest community or our largest community, everybody's got a, a workforce issue and part of that workforce issue is a, a lack of housing. And that's housing of all sizes, all shapes, all different price points. It's for that reason the South Dakota legislature is taking the summer to study the availability of housing in the state. Currently, there are no transgender athletes competing in the state, which is the reason that the South Dakota High School Activities Association testified against the bill. However, in an impassioned speech on the floor, Senator Maggie Sutton said now was the time to act to prevent potential future discrepancies. Governor Christy Nome is expressing concern about the influx of refugees set to make their way to the U.S. and potentially here in South Dakota. She expressed those concerns to our Austin Gus, who has more. With the collapse of the Afghani government, many refugees will be making their way to America. However, Governor Christy Nome isn't sure she'll be okay with accepting them. Well, we've evaluated this in the past, and the decision to accept refugees was based on how thoroughly they were vetted before they came to our state. Several governors across the United States, many of them Republican, have already committed to accepting Afghan refugees fleeing the country. In his announcement, Howgard explained why he was running, while simultaneously pointing out what he sees as flaws in Governor Christy Nome's leadership. Governor Christy Nome and conservative lawmakers are at odds over vaccine mandate bans. Because if we mandate one thing, are we setting a precedent for government telling businesses what they have to do far into the future? Republican State House members John Hansen and Scott Odenbach have drafted legislation that would effectively ban vaccine mandates under any and all circumstances. At this point, Nome has only banned them as a condition of employment in state and local government. As for those who don't want the shot, but work for private employers requiring vaccines, she says other employment opportunities are available. These riders have been on horseback since May 25th, riding from Santee, Nebraska, hoping to draw attention to the issue of missing and murdered indigenous people. The family of Joe Beaver was less than pleased with the roughly $4,000 in fines Roundsburg was called to pay. Efforts to make Roundsburg pay for funeral expenses also were rejected by Judge Brown on account of the fact insurance covered them. With elections just about a year away, the South Dakota Democratic Party is beginning to make their play for South Dakotans' votes. What does this mean for the Black Hills, but especially for South Dakota as a whole, to have the president here, Mount Rushmore, first fireworks in a very long time, it seems. What does that mean for our state? Is there a certain memory or personality trait or thing when you really miss her that you just 
kind of just pops in your mind, oh. like that one thing. It's her eyes. Her eyes. Um, they just understood. Uh, there was something there that was very sincere. And um, I've thought about that. I think that's what brought her to me in the first place. The special session to consider the impeachment of Jason Roundsburg is set to begin on November 9th here in Pierre. Roundsburg paid all of the legal fines and fees that were required of him by the state. Judge John Brown also tried to make it so that Roundsburg would have to perform a community service act every year for the next five years around the anniversary of Joe Beaver's death. However, Roundsburg's legal team is challenging the legality of that punishment, and that will eventually be decided in written briefs. In the Peer Newsroom, I'm Austin Goss. The budget summary and the actual budget itself are available online. However, state lawmakers got this hard copy before they left town today, meaning that they're going to have to do a little light reading before the start of next session. Can you kind of talk about what today looked like, what you discussed, what the procedure looked like in terms of what was behind closed doors? The redistricting process, currently still being debated, could play a large factor in both Republicans and Democrats' abilities to get into state legislative races. Now, the Human Rights Campaign reports that the only other state to pass this type of legislation so far is Idaho, and they quickly had their law appealed by a circuit court. In Pierre, Austin Goss, Dakota News Now. Noam's office says that despite Wednesday's statements, the Biden administration has not actually asked them to house any immigrants in the state. In the Pierre newsroom, Austin Goss, Dakota News Now. Brent also told lawmakers that the stipulation agreement that Peters received after the governor's mansion meeting, which effectively amounts to a third try at the appraisal license process, was completely abnormal. Now the governor's office is refuting that claim, saying that other people, other applicants in the past had also received a stipulation agreement. The governor did not hold any kind of media availability after the event and left state lawmakers with even more on their plate heading into the next couple months. In Pierre, Austin Goss, Dakota News Now. The idea is that those individuals will testify before the committee at their next meeting. Yeah, so going through a file like that, obviously questions are going to arise by the committee. And those are the individuals that are primarily involved with putting together the evidence and the report that we saw over the last couple of days. After the event, a group of reporters asked Halgard how he believed he could challenge a relatively popular incumbent in Governor Christy Nome. He said that he believes once people learn his vision compared to hers, the perception will continue to change. When political news breaks in Pierre, count on Dakota News Now to have it first. Austin Goss broke this story over the weekend. The only station with a newsroom in Pierre. Austin Goss continues our coverage on this breaking news story tonight. Covering the policy decisions that matter to you. One of the most followed Supreme Court cases in state history happened right here. Providing daily reports from the state capitol. Participants here today came from as far as Sioux Falls and Rapid City. Political news when you want it with Dakota News Now.